sharp per usual. Uh, but we'll start with you here in the NBA, first one here in the Pac-12. Last year, there was a lot of firsts. First time living in Eugene, first time being in Eugene, you transferred there. First time you were married, first time you suited up for this team a lot of firsts. And now, you decided to come on back and you kind of know the drill. What has it been like for you, the leader in the face of this program in this season? Well, now I'm excited. Uh, you know, I know there's a great opportunity. Um, you know, a great opportunity that comes a lot of, um, you know, not necessarily pressure, but um, you know, stuff that you got to really do and do extra. Uh, so I'm really excited to, um, you know, be that guy that people lean on and, and you know, look up to. Uh, and like you said, with the first, uh, and not can just go out there and play. I know where to go out to for warm ups. I know where to go, uh, you know, for certain things. And uh, there's not, a, not as much thinking. Now I can just go out there and play. All right, we'll go ahead and open up things now to questions from the media. If you have a question, please raise your hand. We'll bring the microphone over. Please state your name and affiliation. And we'll take the question. Start here in the front left. Kenneth Barry, Judge Hines, Hands Network. Uh, Bo, Coach Landon talked about how you're kind of a family babysitter and the synergy you guys have. Um, kind of describe that and obviously being someone who kind of transferred who's been around longer. What advice did you give uh, Cam when you found out he got like, that ninth year eligibility? Uh, yeah, so your first question, uh, Izzy and I have had the privilege of you know, hanging out with Coach Landon's boys. Um, I've had to take them to basketball practice. Um, we've hung out a few times. Um, we've kept them over at the house. And Coach Lane and Sophia are out of town. Uh, you know, that's just part of the connection we talk about. Um, you know, Coach Lane really puts an emphasis on that. Uh, we want to be the most connected team possible. And I mean, you know, what's better than babysitting uh, those kids and making sure they're they're good? Um, because at the end of the day, they're part of the family. Um, they're good and Coach Lanning's good, he can make us good. So, um, your next question was uh, the ninth year of eligibility. Uh, wow. Um, you know, that's, that's a long time in college. But Cam deserves it. He went through a lot of, uh, you know, trouble, um, a lot of heartache, a lot of, um, you know, ups and downs. So, that's rewarding for him. Next question is in the uh, middle of the back row here. Hey, Bill, we're up loud. Uh, Bill, we're up so I'm curious how leadership has changed for you from when you were a true freshman and kind of going in as, as, as straight out of high school trying to lead the college program to now where in your fifth year you have that much experience in your belt. How has that evolved for you over the years? Well, I think the most important thing is understanding how each individual, um, you know, is capable of being led. Uh, my first year, even first two years, you know, I played with a lot of older guys. And they were mostly the leaders, so I did a lot of the following and just led when um, somebody needed to lead. But now, you know, as, as long as I've been in college, as long as I've played, uh, you know, the guys kind of, um, you know, they look to me for certain things. And, uh, you know, I have that, um, that pressure to be the leader. And, uh, you know, sometimes I don't do a great job. And sometimes I have to, you know, tell them I apologize. I'll do it better next time. But, you know, I try to meet them where they are and go exactly. Um, where they need to be and you know, help them with whatever they're going through because probably I've been through it um, the same thing. Fourth row here on the left. Eric Scoville, 24 7 Sports. Uh, but just I'm curious, you worked with Alex obviously a lot last year, that, that relationship. He's gone now, a couple guys candidates to take over. What are your, I guess, relationships? How's the sauces and finishers building that? Yeah, uh, he was a great player. Um, he was a great leader himself. Um, he was an unbelievable player for the program. He did a lot for the program. Uh, now he's on the bigger, better things uh, in the league. He's going to do a great job with whatever he does in life. Um, but now somebody else has got to fill a void, and uh, you know, I'm excited to see who that person's going to be. Uh, obviously, we have uh, you know who we think is going to be, but you never know. And, um, and at the end of the day, somebody's going to do it. Somebody's going to do it really well. Uh, so I'm just excited to be on the team with so many. Um, you know, great players. Front left here for Coach Alioti. David, boss up, right? They always talk about the defense in Oregon being the related stepchild. Nobody's asking you questions. So, I got on the mic for that reason. Let's talk about the defense next year. No disrespect to you, Bo. And take it. Yeah, just a little bit about the defense next year, um, this coming up season. At 
think the defense is tremendously improved from what I've seen in spring. Um, I think from the big boys up front to the guys in the ILB room and then the guys in the back end as well. I think the guys have did a tremendous job this offseason, you know, putting weight on their body and then also just coming in with the right mindset every day, that we're coming, coming in ready to work and you know, we all got one goal on our mind, and that's to just to be the best every day. So I think the guys are taking one day at a time. Right now, we're just focused on heading into camp healthy and you know, ready to grind throughout camp. In the back, far right. Hey, it was uh, Anthony Morrow on Eastern Media. Um, in comparison to last, your last season, what have you worked on uh, to get better? Uh, and as, from a team aspect, what do you see from the team that you're most excited about going into this season? I'll go first and let Jeff kind of answer that too. Uh, we've been working hard on discipline and consistency. Um, you know, as, ultimately, as a team, we were so close last year. We want to go from good to great this year. Uh, we've talked about it a lot this off season. We've had a lot of uh, meetings about it. Had a lot of time where we can connect, and, uh, you know, fellowship, and talk about what that is exactly going to look like. But it's just going to take each individual being disciplined, being consistent, showing up, doing the extra stuff, doing what they're supposed to do, being able to be. Um, you know, counted on and being accountable in important situations. Because at the end of the day, that's what it's ultimately going to come down to. We got each individual out there has got a job to do, and if they do it, then we feel strong about our success. Staying here on the right side, Kevin Trump, Sun Devil Radio Network, uh, gentlemen. Uh, whose idea was it to outflank the competition in the Pac-12 with the uniform that you guys are wearing today? And then secondly, who decides what uniform and what combination you wear on Saturday? I'm curious on the second question as well. All right, I'll go ahead and take that first one while Bill takes the second one. So, yeah, just for today, I mean, it was kind of something that we, we were talking about throughout the week before that we knew that we were both coming. So, I mean, just wanted to dress to impress in a way. So, yeah, I mean, Bo, Bo did end up getting his suit first, and then I kind of bounced back off back off his idea, but, yeah. Uh, so, we have a, uh, Kenny Farr, our EQ guy, is incredible, he's great at what he does, one of the best in the business, he selects a few people, um, you know, before the season, to get together and collab with what we want to wear, we know our options, we put things together, and then each week, um, well actually, he sends it off from there, so they can have it before, so the fans and everybody knows what, um, color to wear on the weekends, and so we get it uh, finalized, get it passed, and then each week somebody has a chance to put it on, and they're chosen by, um, you know, probably Coach Lanny or somebody in, in the department, and they're chosen to go, you know, flash it around and put it on and, and um, you know, have the, the outfit um, of the week or whatever and, and show it off, so it's a, it's a special if you get picked. Um, I got picked actually with my favorite last year, so it worked out great as the eggshell. Do you like it? <laughs> Good, I like it too. Can I, can I just ask real quick, because almost any time I, I tell a coach, oh, you dress nice, they say, my, that's my wife. So I just got to ask you, a, a year now in a married club, and one year anniversary, is, is, is Izzy part of this? Well, I told Izzy, um, and respectfully, as long as I'm capable, I will pick up my phone. <laughs> uh, she does a great job, she uh, helps me uh, with certain things. I say, hey, do you think this looks nice, whatever? I've always really enjoyed, uh, you know, dressing myself. I used to have to wake up and dress myself. My mom didn't put out my clothes or anything. Um, but yes, I'm mean, a year in. I still get to make my dressing decisions, so that's a good thing. <laughs> Jerry, Jer let's talk about you on the defensive side. You know, Coach Elliott, I know wants to talk about that. For you, you have moved from safety down to linebacker. You got a bunch of experience. Seventh year players, sixth year, fifth, fourth. You've been around for a couple years now. What has that brought to this defensive front seven that also has added some new faces, be a freshman and Mateo and the transfer portal? Yeah, no doubt. I think it adds a lot of versatility to the defense. You know, with me coming in from the linebacker room, I think I can do a lot of things that not your traditional linebacker can do. So, and then also like guys like Jamal Hill coming in, coming down into the room now, coming from safety as well. And then, like you mentioned, Mateo, a guy that can do a lot of things and you know, also drop back into coverage, but also do a good job rushing the pass as well. So I think a lot of versatility, and I think Tosh, is, Tosh and Lenny have done a good job in you know, that off-season program with 
getting guys to to fit the, the right narrative and the right set for what they want to do with the defense and all different a whole lot of different things. You were all asked to read the book Good Good Great. A lot of successful people have read that book. Obviously, successful person was behind that book. What have you taken to both sides of the ball from that? What are some of the notes that come out of the conversations from that exercise? Yeah, I think just from like the meetings we've had, um, with you know player-led meetings, coach-led meetings. I think taken from that, what we've taken from that book on the defensive side of the ball has just been like last year we we had a good defense, but it wasn't the, the, the greatest defense. And obviously, we want to always improve to strive to be better every day. So that's something that we've attacked in this off season. We have, like a lot of the guys, a lot of the transfer guys that have came in. I've seen what we did in the, in the past year with the defense, and you know they realize that you know whether they've came from like Iowa or Arizona State transfers like uh, Connor and Justin, you know they've came from you know historic programs, and you know they want us to elevate from good to great. You know, for me, uh, I think one thing that stuck out the most is just being vulnerable, and being able to take criticism uh, when it's passed along to you, uh, because anybody can be good at something. You know, it takes skill to be good, it takes work to be good, but it's hard to be great at it. How many people are great at it? So at the end of the day, you know, these people that are telling you what you should work on and you know, even yourself, you can be self-critical of yourself and go back and look in the mirror and you know, I gotta get better at this. I gotta get better at going straight back in my drop. It's making my eyes look bad. Uh, we look at the wrong things like I gotta do this, gotta do that. Being critical of yourself, those are the little things that will take you from, you know, reading to safety and knowing he stayed in the middle, but then knowing exactly where he was in the middle. You know, he was 15 yards deep, I still had that pass. So those little things that you can go from, uh, you know, good to great in are, um, they're so minute, but if you find them, they make the biggest difference in the world. Well, I remember being uh, up in Eugene towards the end of your guys' season and talking to Kenny Dillon, and he was so genuinely happy and it's, just, it's not just that he's playing well for the it's great, but for him to be able to come here and have kind of a, a rebirth and reawakening of his career has just been a joy to see him. I know you guys have a, a tight relationship, and now he's got his dream job at ASU. We're going to talk to him in just a minute. But what was that conversation like when you found out that he was going to be leaving and have you been able to still talk to him? Or see him? Yeah, so, uh, you know, first of all, uh, he was one of the biggest reasons I came to work to begin with. He taught me so much throughout the season. Um, you know, about life, about football, about coverages, about offense, about scheme, um, you know, but as soon as the job was open, I knew he was going to get the job. That's just what kind of person he is, um, what kind of coach he is, um, you know, I knew his determination, uh, he was going to go out and get it, because that's his dream, uh, and we always go after our dream, you know, our goals, um, and so I was thrilled uh, when he told me uh, I could have been happier. It's probably the same excitement he had for me seeing me this year is the same excitement I had for him. Uh, I can't wait to beat his tail in November, though. <laughs> um, but I'm excited about that, and uh, you know, I mean, great relationship we'll have for the rest of our lives. Did you see him over there? Yeah, yeah he's over there. He's listening to every word. Love that. Spying on us. Yeah. No secrets here. We're going to be talking to Kenny Dillingham in just a minute. But Bo Jeff, I, I wish you guys the absolute best. We're excited to see what the Oregon Ducks are going to put on the field September 2nd. It all gets underway. So stay healthy and best of luck. Thank you so much. Go Ducks. Thank you.